uh, Hum Electrical goal of the day. Oh, one beauty from Shep. And, uh, yeah, Hodgie took an absolute screamer in the guts of Sir Richard Moore. So, talking of screamers, what will happen from here in this third quarter? The Premiership quarter, as they say, getting it out of the centre is Grover. Throws it on the left foot, looking for a teammate. It went through the hands of Hodge. Well packed up there by Cullen. It gets it across to Allen, and he switches to that outer side, which is patrolled by Bartell. Bartell goes up looking for Kirby and he takes a mark. So just a pedestrian start or a nice easy start for Kalgoorlie with Kirby getting some good distance and purchase on that ball. Strong contest between Hooks and Sullivan and the spoil of Hooks takes it out of bounds on the outer side. They look pretty comfortable over there in their gazebo set up over there but uh, with the setting sun uh, I guess <laughs> they'll be looking forward to that sneaking and hiding and disappearing behind the grandstand. Very festival like Scooter. Could be at Adelaide Oval. Could be. <laughs> so we're at centre half four looking to go forward but nothing doing again so some nice early pressure from both sides in trying to not uh, lose sight of the ball a little bit of uh, to do between uh, Hooks and Martelli he's been handy for the moment so he's been on the ground oh Hagrid takes the ball out gets it to Varian Varian goes inside 50 but on this occasion it's Russell the skipper of the Tigers in front of Simons so from full back Right on the defence of 10 metre square, he goes to that outer side looking for Shan, sets the big man on a task, and that ball has gone out of bounds on the full. So a mistake there by the skipper, good thought, but unfortunately the execution wasn't good enough for Shan, who uh, for a moment there had broken free. Now the ball comes inside 50 again by the Ruse, and there'll be a free kick picked out defensively to the Tigers, and this time it'll be Michael Russell. So what will he do this time? Probably go the same direction, I dare say but maybe inside the boundary line. Call play on. Clark was good, good with pressure on the mark. Well, comes up, comes off hands. It's hit uh, Kerr. It's a Bartell. Goes inside 50 and Perfect finds Bartelli. Gee, the big men are having an influence this afternoon for the Kalgoorlie City Footy Club. You thought that may not be the case when you saw 34, 35, 34, 35 degrees predicted for the grand final, and that's exactly what we've got. But we've got the number 36 of Colin Martelli about to have another shot at goal. That layoff pass by Reese Bartell then, just to hit, kick it and hit it to advantage, was absolutely sublime. So what will Martelli do? He will cross the 50, he'll kick from 40 metres out directly in front. That is superb purchase on the footy. The burly goes straight over Graham Davis's head and they come from everywhere the roost to congratulate Big Martelli in sliding through his second this afternoon. He's 12th on the season. He's been a useful contributor in his 13th game of footy for the Roos in season 2019. He's uh, 23rd in total for the black and whites, and that restores themselves to a five-goal lead on the Worthy Park scoreboard. We've travelled three minutes this third quarter, thanks to the G4 Gold sponsors, including Retrovision Kalgoorlie, Goldfields Crane Hire, and Rickman Emergency Management Services. I would have liked to have seen Boulder trying to come out defensively out to this wing here. There's a mismatch in height between and Coleman and, and Ryan McDonald and they could have they had two guys that trying to come out of that um, defensive 50 neither were uh, honoured because it came back in with interest and Coleman's got a clear height advantage well the ball's gone up in the middle of Sir Richard Moore and it didn't go too much further than that big centre circle that we have here at Sir Richard Moore three minutes played in this third quarter as the ball goes up and by Dave Roberts puts it into the orbit it's a ruck tapped one by there by the ruse but it's the Tigers who go inside 50 Ooh. Good mark there, taken by Cisco, and he will line up. San Francisco, Francisco. Francisco. That's the one. How are you going there, Gwyneth? Yeah, no, struggling. I went away for a comfort stop, and I'm back again, and I can't really pick up where I was I left off. Can't anyway, comfortable. No, but a big kick from he yeah. as he goes towards the goals. Does Francisco towards the hospital end? And he puts one on for the Tigers. So a bit of kick to kick, goal for goal action at the start of this Premiership quarter. Important reply that, Simo. Yeah, most definitely. And what was great to see is they had some, they clearly had a more structured set up on the inside of the footy there. And they were cool and calm as they came through and they held corridor, which is what they haven't been able to do. And it was a good mark by Francisco, a real slips catch there and went back and duly saluted on his left foot. So now the big man who just kicked the goal, Francisco, finds himself in the ruck to take on the, the champion of the Kagali City Footy Club, the dual Mitchell medalist in Alex Stewart, who's been mighty again this afternoon. So umpire Hayden Carter will get the game back underway. Just a slight little lull. 10-3 playing 6-3. Four and a half minutes gone. Francisco got the knockdown to Hughes, but the ball evaded him. Francisco goes back in again. And big tackle handed there, there by Stuart. Ball has uh, sprung free to Sullivan, but uh, nothing going any further than just adjacent to that big centre square, as Glennie likes to refer to it. Ball goes back up. 
This time it's again with Stewart, but he palmed it straight down to the agency of Boulder. He's wrapped up, and uh, Groundhog Day will go again. Bit stale at this point in time as we see the ball go up in the orbit. Stewart loses his opponent in the ruck, but gains the advantage. Kick goes inside, 50 now, dribbles over there in Simons. It's a long way down for him. He's there uh, trying to wrestle to get the play. Ball spills free now, and it's with the agency of Hamilton. Working it out now is Bevan, who gets a big, big tackle. Puts that one on. It's not holding the ball, but it was a big application nonetheless. Wasn't clean, but effective there by Boulder, getting it away from that danger area. So it'll be Martelli who contests the ruck. You can pick him out with his big socks pulled up. It'll be hot for those calves of he's at the moment. Ball spills out. Umpire said free kick. It'll go the way of the ruse. Application. Mm. I haven't heard that in football terms for, for a fair while. The only time I hear about that is on a smartphone. Play. Absolutely. Well done, Brendan. As the ball comes inside 50, we'll pick up the footy where plenty of people are using the application Triple M to tune into us right now, right across the World Wide Web out of the app stores. Right, so we've travelled now uh, six, six minutes. Beautiful. 10 3, 63, the Roos. The Tigers, 6 3, 39 on the Worthy Part scoreboard. Boundary umpire hurls it in. Ball comes over the back. In there are the Tigers. Defence getting all wrapped up. And umpire Dave Roberts, Anthony Cur Curry he says, Give it to me. Gee, Michael Russell's efforts always 110%. He's been very good for Boulder Tigers. So today. plays about 20 metres out from the attacking goal for the Ruse at the moment. Ball comes out of there now, and it's with Leo McLean. Who gets the clearing kick now, and the Tigers can be away if they choose to. A couple of little fumbles in there. It was a dangerous hand pass back into enemy territory. But there is Smart. McLean coming out on the far wide. Now is Grover. Haven't really called him much this afternoon. Here's Grover. Ball comes out now, though, and it's down the far line. Mark couldn't quite be taken there by Hodge, but he's a little bit more clever than his opponent. Hodge, he's got a big kick, goes forward, couldn't quite take the mark over there, was Braden Lou, and it's the Ruse defence that continue to work and work hard. They're going to work it through the middle of Sir Richard Moore. There's Butterfield like a butter nut. There he is, he pops up, and the ball goes through the massive delivery to Davies. He crosses that kick inside, 50, ball goes into the orbit. Mm, big man couldn't take the mark out of that one was Simons. Spinning around was Bradbury. Oh, oh. Louis Davies got taken down in that tackle. I wow. saw a hyper extension yep. there. Went, the knee went backwards. That, oh, that looks too good. Doesn't look too good. Doesn't look very good. No, there was a. It flexed back where it shouldn't, Glenn. He's had a good, see, a good game so far today. He's in the hands of the trainers at the moment, as the ball's being worked out of defence by the Tigers with Dale Hamilton. He was here running laps earlier this week. Hamilton ball can't come in and chopped off though by his Tigers teammate in Coleman. Goes down towards Paper Talk. Couldn't quite take the mark. Ball goes out of bounds right in front of the coaching staff for the Tigers. Davies is running off as sorts, so uh, not the worst outcome I dare say, but he's a very sore man. Boundary throw in right in front of us here in the Rex Mitchell grandstand, comes down to Hughes, has a fumble, comes up to Varian, he's been handy this afternoon it's with Francisco, he hand passes to his oh. teammate in Bevan and he takes a high knock for his team and he hits the ground running he crosses the ball across to Grover he's in the centre of Sir Richard Moore, chips across, this is good play, this is Boulder at their very best, it's with Rundle He's on a one-on-one -on -one situation. What will he do with his inside 50 kick? Gets good purchase on it. All 40, 50 metres. Where's Hodge? Up he goes. Great defensive work there by Cullen. Balls hit the deck. It's with Muller. Throws it on the left foot with a bit of a scrubby one. Going forward, looking there for Martin. Martin picks it up, puts it over his shoulder and just goes to the other side and across the face of goals and out for a boundary throw. And an exciting build-up by the Boulder City Footy Club. That's what they've been best at in season 2009. And it's the first time, Simo, we've probably seen that switch and open play. Yeah, most definitely they uh, got smart use of it, clean use of it. That got him inside 50. We'll see if they can capitalise now. Boundary throwing deep here in advantage to the Tigers, but it's with the Roos who are electing to bring things out here in the cut of the far side. Ooh, ball bounces into the car park. Yeah, it's going to go into the men's. Who's at the ladies on that side? It's down at old JFL house. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Just want to go a little bit nostalgic. They're all neutral these days, Glenn. Uh, no. 9.15, 9 minutes 15 played in this third quarter for our GFL Gold sponsors. Thanks to Rickland, Goldfields, Crane High and the final series sponsor in Retrovision, Kalgoorlie. So it's with the Tigers. have got a shot on goal from that pocket because we saw the ball out of bounds. Oh, of course he's there. From that last kick, but it's nothing but Alex Stewart, who just looked rather graceful with that, by the way. His kick is an absolute doozy, though. Couldn't quite get it to hands on the budget. 
Couldn't quite move forward, but it's going to be back to another long sleever in Clark for the kick out. And they've worked it rather nicely for McDonald. He gets the hand pass away now. It finds Farrick. Farrick going back for the one two. Corralled over on the far side, and Farrick picks up his scraps. Finds Bradbury by himself. Hughes in hot pursuit. They're all looking for the footy at the moment. There's Gaddy. His hand pass was a little just premature. And we'll get a boundary thrown on the opposite side. A bit too cute. Sometimes it's good just to uh, either stem the flow so you can get some overlap run, run or get the ball on the boot. Enjoyed the cuteness all the same. So it's up with Francisco. He gets the, the better of Varian on that occasion because Stuart was down the back there a moment ago. It's with Gaddy, but a push off the ball and a free kick will go to Logan Hughes. Tried his uh, heart out this afternoon. He does look like he's suffering a little, but uh, no time to suffer. He really has to... Uh, he's lifted his work rate this quarter. Yeah, really has to go for it as he did in the early part of the game, but that kick had a little bit too much on it. I think it might have gone out of bounds on the full or off the hands of Dempster. So centre wing, the ball has gone out of bounds on the full and it will be a resulting kick coming in through Clark or across to Tim Miller. He's uh, had some nice handy moments this afternoon as well with some spoiling and touch. He kicks it up to Farrick. Farrick cleverly hand passes. Ball smothered out there by uh, his uh, teammate that he gave it to and another boundary throw. And so always keeping very busy in the Goldfields Football League at all three venues, the boundary umpires on the outer side. On this occasion, it's Stewart now back in the ruck against Francisco. Stewart fell, hit the deck, but uh, nothing doing from the umpire. Great tackle there by Tej on uh, Kirby, I think it was. And the ball, um, and the umpire says, give it to me. So a little bit of a lull. So 11 and a half minutes gone, 10-3 plays 6-3. It's actually 24 points as it was at half time. Tap down and in the agency here of Bartell, but the ball took a crooked bounce. Coming through is Farrick. He hand passes to a teammate. Picked up by Varian, who has a snap at goal. Has a snap at goal, he does, and kicks one. Very important by the skipper. Been more than handy this afternoon. Just took the initiative, took the opportunity, threw it on his right boot, 40 metres out, straight over the goal umpire's hat. That is a big goal to take the margin out to five points. 12 minutes gone on the Worthy Park scoreboard. 11-3, playing 6-3. Jack Varian, take a bow. Very handy sausage. That one, Scooter, he uh, just bent it back over the shoulder. He drove it and he kicked it nice and hard with plenty of penetration. It never looked like missing, didn't deviate, mate. So we move to 11-3, uh, 69 plays 6-3, 39. Back to a 30-point ball game. Previously, the highest margin was 36 points. Umpire Hayden Carter's in the middle of Sir Richard Moore Sports Arena. Ball goes up. San Francisco's in there contesting the ruck alongside Shepard. Ball comes out now, kicked towards the outer boundary line. Running onto it is McDonald in there. Is also the work of Haynes. Ball's close to the boundary line over there. And we'll see a ball up. That wonderful pole that's been there for probably about, well, since there was light. Time it goes. Edison. Edison bought that pole here. I reckon he put it in the wrong spot, but he was right on his theory. Anyway, ball comes back in now. It's with the Tigers, and they're going to try and move it into their 50 with Rundle. Rundle's kick towards Hodge. Hodge takes a wonderful mark. Unbeaten when he's uh, just a free runner. There's a bit yeah. of gracefulness about that mark from Hodge, wasn't he? Just popped up. And when every, when everything's board. in sync for him, he's actually a very, very good-looking footballer. So Hodge, who's already kicked uh, this afternoon so far just the one that came in the second quarter Hodge has kicked 29 30 this will be 31 if he scores for this one this afternoon Hodge to the hospital end for the Tigers he's happy about it. there's a fist pump action happening and the Tigers get one back 11 4 70 plays 7 3 45 and it was important that they did they really can't get this margin any more than basically where it is now at this stage of the game We've travelled nearly 14 minutes. They've been tenacious, the Tigers, no doubt about that. No downing tools at all in this particular occasion. Uh, but the Roos just seem to have the answers when they need the answers. Yeah, definitely. And I think we're watching everyone return back to the middle there, Muller definitely looks sore after that knock last week. So hopefully he can uh, keep engaged in this contest and uh, try and give them some drive forward. Otherwise, they've, Kangas, they've gone for some freshness. Alex Stewart's had a reckon rest. And then we see Shepard into the ruck. 14 minutes played in this third quarter. So Francisco goes up. If his parents had any sense of humour, they would have called him Sam. But he gets it out to Muller. Muller puts on the afterburners, crosses the square, goes inside with the scrubber, but gives the opportunity to Lou. He hand passes to Dempster, but overcooks it. Here comes that strong Kangas defence, but the ball's come out to Tim Miller. He desperately dives on it, but the Tigers are in there again. Get that pole out of the way, Glennie, please. It's now with the Kangas on the outer side to Chad McDonald, and he slows things down, but hand passes across to Dylan Clark. Falls on their left foot, and it just goes 50 metres bang down that outer side but no one was home and 
the ball just trickled away from Francisco, which was uh, depressingly for he, because it means there'll be a boundary throw in and the advantage of 45 metres of yardage gained on that occasion by Clark. How do we get around this, Glenn? Install this light on the skyhook? It'll go on top of the grandstand, mate. Uh, as we move the ball back into play, Ryan takes a big punch towards the ball. It's McDonald who runs onto it. In there is Varian. Just kicked the goal for the ruse. Player held, and a free kick will go to McDonald. So Are you it's... suggesting that I say move it, and you're going to? Scooter, big words. That's uh, Paul Avenal. Is McDonald goes for a kick towards Simons. Couldn't quite take the mark. Ball spills out of that pack one. It'll kick around the body there from Martelli. Oh, Clark's right on the boundary, close to the marquees this afternoon, providing some shade. Get out of the cheerleaders around that corner, and we'll get a boundary throw in. Some uh, 15 and a half played in this third quarter. Kangas 11, 470. They lead the Tigers 7, 345 on the Worthy Parts scoreboard. Well, they're not listening, Glenny, because they give you nothing. Plenty of that. <laughs> That's all right. Plenty of action happening at the moment on the field as Bradbury's kick gets smothered off. Oh, all wrapped up in there. Might have been Ted. Ball comes out of there now. Can't misplace this bloke. It's Coleman. He looks to sell some candy. Gets all wrapped up and disposed of the ball in the process. Seeing the ball coming out now is Rundle and a boundary throw in on the far side. Just got himself confused. I think he wanted to go left. He wanted to go right. He wanted to go central and he actually get nowhere. So Coleman couldn't quite do much there, but he's going to look to contest the ruck. No, it's going to be Cisco contest the ruck against Shepard. So Stewart spending some time off the ball at this point in time. Ball's still on that far side in front of the, the fans who are in today. Some updated score, some 1,780 who have attended the GFL Grand Final today. Is that like the waffle? Have you made that up? No, it's straight in from Commissioner Sue Sterling who says, Glenny, here's the numbers. Ball's back into play and we'll get a ball up. Well, that's a terrific turnout, 1,000. 780 people here watching what at the moment is a very good game of football currently in the favour of the Calgary City Footy Club. They've got all the answers at the moment. 70 plays, 45. Well done by Brett Francisco. Gets it out to uh, Rundle. Rundle throws it on the right foot. Up goes Hodge. How many times have we said that this final series? Up goes Hodge. He takes the mark. He's come down a little ginger but goes back. He's on centre wing. He's a long way from where he'd normally be. Leo McLean's oh, here all his own. he's looking dangerous, isn't he? Yeah, I don't think he'd kick over there, but uh, he goes up the line now looking for Dempster, and I think, again, that's out of bounds on the full. This must be, uh, yeah, very frustrating from all supporting the black and gold. They just sort of can't get it past centre at the moment. When they do, they kick it out of bounds on the full. They've had some very unfortunate soft turnovers so far this quarter, Scooter. So Tim Miller, oh, look at that, all of 60 metres goes uh, forward. It's back with Hodge who tries to take the resulting defensive mark. And guess what? The ball goes out of bounds. So it's just saying Davies just looking to come back on here, Simo. Yeah, look, as I say, it might have been a, hyper, a little stinger in there from that hyperextension. I hope that, I'm sure they've tested it to see if it's structurally OK and he'll be back out there. Well, we don't have the doctor on board, but we do have Simo with the special comments on just about everything this afternoon. He could almost commentate what happened with those bees earlier today, which put, took some players to the ground. They were buzzing. <laughs> they were looking so for a new nest. Hughes finds in Coleman. In here. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hughes ret takes the uh, return back and he says, I'll take this one, go and find some space. But it's danger. McDonald's in there as well. He knows they're all about danger. He gets all wrapped up. Could be holding the ball here. Umpire says, no, he didn't have any prior. And I'll have it. Thanks very much. As they peel off of McDonald. He's young. He's fit. Well, he's probably getting on in age now, to be honest. But I tell you what, he's still got that vitality that he has. He's younger than you. Ball comes back up now. And getting all wrapped up is kind of Bevan. Bit of humour in the commentary as Muller receives the hand pass from Bevan. Goes up and into the sun. And the ball managed to find James. It could be at the moment. No, Can't Rundle. quite see his number. It's Rundle. That pole's right there, Scooter. It's Rundle's kick. This is a huge one. Oh, got it's the a deep into oh, attack. Oh, well oh, but I tell you what, Hodge lost his footing. It's with Cullen. Gets it now to Davies. He's back on his Davies. He's tough. He's a tough nut. Ball comes into a bit of a pack forming. Davies is in there. He still wants some of it. Comes out now with a big kick right here towards the interchange. Is it going to make some sort of distance? Two on two. Well, two on each other, actually. They're from the same team. But the ball's back. Play on now. Bevan, what's going on here? I have no idea. Not of oh. uh, some of the players at this point in time. Now it's a turnover with the Ruse. It's with Sullivan. His kick was thrown into Mitch Shepard. He'll be feeling sheepish after that one this time. That's a good wet oh. oh. In comes a big clash. Coming out now. Ball is just trying to work its way out of some congestion. It's with Hooks. Pick it up, 
Sun and go. Hooks gets it away. Fumble here, fumble there. Cisco, Francisco manages to get it across now to uh, Leo McLean. His kick goes towards the top of the attacking 50. Grover's in there, receives the hand pass off now. It's with Dempster for a kick on goal to an open goal square. It's Dempster. Oh, oh and it's on the last oh. line. It's just across at the last moment. Darren Higgins pulled up very rough yeah. from that big clash with Conan Bevan. And the way Conan Bevan's moving around, he's not too flash either. Yeah, no, that was some passage of play. The ball hardly moved right here on the GFL logo. They were going in. And Louis Davies, who Lewis Davies, who returned to the field, really set a wonderful example there for his black and white teammates. He saw, but he just went in and made it all happen. But we're on the outer side here with Boulder. Looks like some cramp is starting to take effect. Up they go. This time Hodge getting the tap away with Boulder, but nothing doing. Coming across was Allen. He was beset upon by a couple of would-be Tiger tacklers. And the umpire says, give it to me. 11-4, plays 7-4. We've been hovering around that 24-point mark forever now. Just crossed 20 minutes here in the third quarter, thanks to the GFL gold sponsors. Ball's flicked out. Dempster, he waited for it. And no one waits because Kirby went in and grabbed it oh. and forced the ball out of bounds into a bunch of kids there that were just socialising. Good to see they're not on their phones. Yes, they're, what, they're, they're intrigued with the play, Scooter. So boundary throw in, out of side. Well, if they had their phones out, maybe it was just photos. Oh, they'll be checking their applications. Uh, the, triple, <laughs> back the, the triple M application, that sounds good, doesn't it? It does indeed. So Hughes tried to gain some ground over there for the Tigers, but we'll get a ball up. We're into time on some 21 minutes travelled in this third quarter. Four goals kicked two either way. We had 24 points, roughly the margin at half time, and we'll look to go to three-quarter time with that margin as well with the extended break. Ball's back in now with Martelli. He gets a kick and goes further down the line, but it's chopped off in the process by Russell. His kick goes back, but nothing but Ruse's defence there working it out. Kick to kick on the far side here at Sir Richard Moore Sports Arena where you paid $10 to see it this afternoon. Oh, wrapped yeah, up in there. Tackle. Holding this, the ball. Could this, this be call. a moment? Could this be a moment? Tell you what, Michael. so Russell. Oh, he's oh. been huge this quarter. I know that's that a kick, bad kick. The kick wasn't huge, but turning around there is Rundle. He looks up. He's got a couple in there to try and counteract. Does that though. Ball spills free now. Couldn't quite pick it up. Was Francisco. He's in there trying to word things out now though with Muller who looks to take a sprint. He's got him lining up now. Here's Haynes with a shot on goal for the Tigers. Left across the face and a minor score. Some 22 minutes played in this third quarter for the GFL gold sponsors. Rickland, Goldfields, Crane High and Retrovision Kalgoorlie. Here comes the, the Ruse now and they're working to bring it down this side. Smiley, he gets a bit of ball, a boot to ball. Up and wrapped up in there was Barrett. Gets it out now to McDonald and finds Butterfield. Butterfield looks for big Hagrid Stewart. He wasn't quite sure where the ball was going to oh. bounce, but he takes on his opponent, which is Benny James, and he says, oh, get rid of this bloody thing. Here comes Louis Davies in there, though. He couldn't quite do anything. It was an yeah. awkward bounce Ooh. for him. The last hit there. No, that's all right. Against Ooh. Leo Ooh. McLean from Martelli. I don't know what the umpire's called on this one. I think he's just called time off. And that's the end of the third quarter.